Welcome back. Today is October 3rd. John and I are staying in an answer plot. It's raining, so we thought we'd come back to you and welcome you to Easy Insights Update number 12. So Corey, seeing some fields opened up out there at corn, we are finding some variability. I'm getting some questions around what that variable variability is and how might we explain that with the genetics we have out there. Well, I think of what uh, the yield equation is today, right? Yield equals genetics times environment times management, right? Environment is whatever it is given every year, right? There's two other things that we can control, genetics and management. Those two are tied together. Think about humans, right? We all have very different metabolism rates or uh, our ability to withstand stress or low amounts of food, right? But think of hybrids just the same way. We know all of them are going to respond differently to environments or to different management strategies. So that's great. How do we actually put those management strategies together in the field? Okay, great question. Let's go look at it in the plot. So I'll set this up for you. This two rows on each side of the camera are the same hybrid. The hybrid has a low response to population and a low response to nitrogen, which we derive in the answer plot research. On your left, my right, we're going to look at a low RTP and low RTN hybrid planted at 34,000 plants per acre, 120 pounds of nitrogen up front. We're going to scan over and we're going to look at the same product planted at 38,000 plants per acre got 120 pounds of nitrogen up front, 90 pounds side rest. So it's a low RTP, low RTN. So what would that mean to a farmer? I think about the stability that this product has at low nitrogen rates. Granted, we got some pretty good organic matter, but when you compare our investment of population and nitrogen in this one, which has uh, 4,000 plants less and 90 pounds of nitrogen less, versus a product that we gave it all the goodies in season and pushed the pops, if you do yield checks, the yield is pretty much spot on, but we spent more money to get this yield versus this product. We knew it was a low response to nitrogen. We knew we probably didn't have to manage it a whole lot in season if we weren't worried about nitrogen loss. And the population probably wasn't needed as high to optimize yield because we found that it had a low response population. So Corey, been on the farm talking to a lot of growers. Uh, we can definitely find hybrids to fit in this play, but most of our conversations are still coming into how do we manage for higher yields when we have hybrids that have that response that we need to get to higher yield potential. What are some options we can do there? So that's a great question. And let's go look at a high response population and a high response nitrogen product. So being an agronomist and in a very different world where we are today versus Western Minnesota or Northern Minnesota, it's irresponsible for me to tell anybody what the right planting population is or what the right nitrogen rate is, right? But I think about if we know the hybrids and we know the response, it gives us some insight locally and how to manage them. So let's go take a look at another plot. So we're looking at the same hybrid Two different planting rates, two different nitrogen rates. This product is a high RTN, high RTP product. Same setup, we're going to look at uh, 34,120 pounds of nitrogen up front, 38,000 plants per acre, 120 pounds of nitrogen up front, and 90 pounds side rest. It's a high RTN, high RTP. So what would we expect to see? As we push populations and push nitrogen at the same time, we'd expect the return to be a lot better. If you look at the yield differences, even though this lower rate of population of nitrogen still looks pretty good, as we push populations, push nitrogen rates, there's a 20 bushel swing just between the two. So what's that matter, right? How do you put that in perspective? And I think of as you put your high RTP, high RTN products in the best parts of your fields or the best fields, you can feel confident that you're gonna have a return as you push populations and as you push nitrogen rates. Now, if you had a low response nitrogen product and a low response population in that same part of the field, you probably don't have to get as aggressive on population or nitrogen rates to achieve similar yield standards, right? It's all relative, but I would use RTN scores and RTP scores on a sliding scale. The higher the RTN, the higher the rate you need on the best parts of the ground. Same thing for population. The higher yielding or high yield potential areas you have, you can feel confident as you push populations that will return in yield to overcome the expense of extra population. So Corey, uh, last comment on answer plot data coming out. Give us a brief summary of what we're seeing. So it looks like we'll start combining uh, answer plots here in the next couple weeks. We'll get initial yield data on corn and soybeans to sort through. We'll get that back out through answerplot.com. If you want an easy uh, connection to the answer plot yield, go on to answerplot.com and you can sign up for 
instant yield results. As soon as they're ready, they'll send you an email or a text. So go to answerflat.com and you can find that for yourself.